Hi everyone, I'm Timothy Jagger. And I'm Harry Singh from O'Brien Blackburn with the 10th edition of the monthly property news for 2024. Unfortunately, Melbourne's pledging property market continues to slide with 0.1% drop in the median values for combined dwelling recorded for the month of September by CoreLogic. Nationally, we saw an increase of 0.4% in values. Most of the declines in the Melbourne market over the last 12 months has occurred in the last quarter, where values have dropped 1.1%. Quite a significant drop. Now, over the last fortnight, the Project Housing and Affordability Index was released, and nationally, households can now afford the smallest share of homes on record, with a typical household earning just over 112,000 a year, can only afford 14% of homes sold across the country. Now, looking at the graph below, you'll see that this is the lowest share since records began in 1994 to 1995. This is a significant decline from even compared to three years ago, where nationally a median income household could afford 43% of homes sold in 2020 to 2021. Looking at our next chart, Melbournians suffer from the being the third most unaffordable capital city in the country, with households only be able to afford 12% of the homes. It's uncanny, but Western Australia, which has had over 24% in property prices over the 12 months, is still easily the most affordable state to buy within. Incomes will need to rise sustainably before affordability metrics return close to average and sustainable levels. Now, inflation for the month of August was released last week, coming in at 2.7%, down from 3.5% in July. Now this is the lowest recording we've got since August 2021. And while this does sound like lower interest rates in the future, which will help with serviceability, it could come with a tightening of credit supply as highlighted in RBA's September Financial Stability Review, which sees residential properties as a key sector where domestic vulnerabilities could increase if households take on excessive levels of debt. Looking at the statistics below, of the five most expensive capital cities within Australia for property, Melbourne sits last for growth and dwelling values. The annual change in median values for combined dwellings has fallen in total 1.4%, but it was houses compared to units that struggled the most, dropping on average 7,519 over the last 12 months, whereas unit prices have remained relatively the same. In closing, the Australian Bureau of Statistics just released their building and approvals for August and dwelling approvals nationally fell 6.1% for the month and fell 3% for Victoria. Another significant decline. Now that's all for this month. Remember the information provided is of a general nature. You should always seek independent legal, financial, taxation and other advice in relation to your unique circumstances. Thanks for taking the time to watch this month's Mark Wrap. Until next month, it's bye for now. Bye.